Hi there, welcome to 369 Learn and Maths. And we're looking at circle geometry. And in this question, we will be looking at a CXC past paper type question. The question states that in the diagram above, A, B, C, D are points on the circumference of the circle with center O. Line X, C, Y is a tangent to the circle at C. So we'll recognize that this line is a tangent at C, our point C. Angle B, A, D is 64 degrees. So I want to put that in. So I'll write 64 degrees for this angle here. And angle D, C, Y from D, C to Y. So we're going to this angle created between these two straight lines. That's equal to 23 degrees. We want to find angle B. Notice, we want to find measure of angle B, C, D. So we're looking at B to C to D. What is this angle right here? All right, so let's look at this again. We have a quadrilateral, a four-sided plane shape. Because once we have a shape with a plane shape with four sides, we know it's a quadrilateral. We have rectangles, kites, we have trapezium, square, etc. But this one, we know it's a quadrilateral, yes, but it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Why? Because each of its four vertices are on the circumference of the circle. So we have point A, B, C, and D. The vertices of the quadrilateral all lie on the circumference of the circle. Now what we know about a cyclic quadrilateral, a few things we know about a cyclic quadrilateral. We know that the opposite angles are supplementary, meaning that this angle here and this angle will be the same, will be supplementary, meaning they add up to, so if we call this A, we call this B, angle B, we know that angle A plus angle B will be equal to 180 degrees. They are supplementary, not equal, but they are supplementary. We know that this angle and this angle, if we call this C and we call this D, we also know that angle C plus angle D add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary as well. The so opposite angles are supplementary, not the adjacent ones. The adjacent ones are not supplementary, may or may not be supplementary, but we know for a fact that the opposite angles are supplementary. So that we want to bear that in mind. So a few things we could actually look, if we look at this, we can see, all right, this is 64 degrees. Which angle is opposite this angle in the quadrilateral? So we're not looking at this triangle within the, the quadrilateral. We're looking at the outer shape, the quadrilateral. Which angle will be opposite angle A? That's correct, angle C in this case. And so these two angles will be supplementary. They'll add up to 180 degrees. So we can figure what angle C is. Or we can also call this angle B, C, D. All right, so we know that angle B, C, D is equal to 180 degrees minus 64 degrees. And that will be equal to 116 degrees. And we give our reason as required because we know that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees, or we can say they are supplementary, okay? Which means they add up to 180 degrees. Now, so we know this is actually 116 degrees. Okay. So now we need to find angle CBD. So let's identify CBD. CBD. So we're looking at this angle here. C. So we're looking at line CB, which is this one, to line BD is this one so we know that we're looking at this angle in between here C to B then B to D CBD so that angle we need to find 
Now there's a rule that we need to know. And that rule is, let's look at it. If we have a circle and we have a tangent and we have a card, that means that tangent. All right, let me try not to do that too straight. Although it could apply. So let's look at um, a card here meeting the tangent here. So let's call this a tangent, assuming this is a straight line. So we have tangent um, AB and we have chord CD. So this angle here would meet let's call consider this angle to be theta. This theta, the angle between the chord CD or DC and the tangent is actually equal to the angle in the alternate segment. What do I mean? So if we form an angle on top of this chord, or form an angle here, then this angle as well will be the same theta because the angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate segment. Again, the angle between the chord and the tangent, that means that chord, is equal to the angle subtended by that same chord in the alternate segment. So this chord has an angle in the alternate segment standing on it. So we have this angle here, right? Let's call this angle um, C, um, CQD, CQD, which is, which is equal to theta, whatever that angle is, theta is, CQD is standing on the chord CD. And it's equal to the angle between that same chord it's standing on. It's equal to that um, angle that is standing between, well, that chord. It's equal to that angle between the chord CD and the tangent. So if this is, if Q, if you say that theta is equal to um, 25 degrees, then 25 degrees here would be the same as 25 degrees here. Hope that's helpful. So if we look at this angle here, what angle would that be? If you pause the video and think about it. All right, so recognize that this angle would actually be what? So look at this card CD here and this tangent XY. And between the chord and the tangent, we have 23 degrees. And subtended by this chord CD is the angle right here between that's in the alternate segment because remember a chord divides a circle into two segments again if you have a, a circle and it cuts by a chord we will refer to the smaller slice over here as the minor segment and over here as the major segment so in this major segment so this chord in this major segment over here we have this angle subtended by this chord at B right here. So this is actually 23 degrees. Okay, so fully that was understood. So we know that CBD is equal to 23 degrees, or to be more precise in terms of explaining, we say that C angle CBD is equal to angle uh, B, D, B, C, we can say D, C, Y, angle D, C, Y, which is equal to uh, 23 degrees and the reason we can just write this as alternate segment theorem if you want to write out the long thing then we could actually write this right here that the angle between the tangent a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. It's not an option. All right, so we have the next one, which is angle. Remember, we're trying to find the measure of angle OBD. Now, 
now we need to figure where angle OBD lies and angle OBD lies within if you look at it you notice it lies within a triangle so we have a triangle that is within the circle now if we just look at it look at this for a moment we have the center of the circle and we have two lines from the center of the circle to the circumference now these lines we refer to them as the radius or radii for plural so all the radii within a circle are of the same length right so all of these these two radii have the same length so if this is 14 centimeters then this one is also 14 centimeters as an example so this angle he here is equal to this angle here why because we know that a triangle with two sides equal is referred to as a as an isosceles triangle and the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal why is that because the sides they face are of the same length which means the angle that produced those sides must be the same as well so if this angle here is 20 degrees then this is also 20 degrees if this is 30 degrees then this is also 30 degrees so when we look at the question that we were given we see the same situation we have this angle which is angle O B D is equal to this angle here which is angle O D B and these two angles are equal because the sides they face are of equal lengths because these are two radii of the same circle so they are equal so, so let's look at this one this angle here we need to figure this angle out quickly so this is 64 degrees the angle at the circumference and there's a rule that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference so the angle at the center is angle BOD BOD is double the angle at the circumference which is 64 degrees now to be more clear the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference must be standing on the same two points meaning right here and right here angle BOD has these two endpoints being B and D and angle BAD has the same endpoints being B and D in other words these two angles are standing on the same chord in B D we can say they're standing on the same chord or we can even say they're standing on the same arc arc B D or we can say arc B C D so angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference given that they're standing on the same chord or arc and so we can use that fact now to help us so angle B O D so before I'm not finished here so angle B O D we know is equal to twice the angle of the circumference and the angle of the circumference is 64 degrees so double that will give us 128 degrees so therefore this will help us to calculate this angle here because this angle is uh, 128 degrees so this is going to be 128 degrees to find the this angle or this angle what we need to do is to subtract the 128 from what 180 degrees and that will give us what 52 degrees and to find each of these angles since the remaining angle or the remaining amount will be 52 need to be shared equally between these two angles since they are the same 
So basically we need to divide that amount we have remaining by two or to divide into equal parts and that will give us 26 degrees. So angle OBD as well as angle ODB equals 26 degrees. So just to clarify that again, we found the angle at the center being 128 and it's part of a triangle. We know the sum of angles in the triangle will give us 180 degrees because they are supplementary. We take 128 from 180, that gave us 52 degrees. And these, since these two angles are base angles of an isosceles triangle, they must be equal. And so we divide the remaining amount, 52 by 2, and we got 26. So the reason we would need to put for for this, when we did that, we would have to basically um, say that um, base angles, so we can put that down as one of our reasons, base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, you can put that in, All right? That's the reason why we have this here. And then we divide, we subtract from 180 because we know that what? Sum of angles in a triangle, so that's another reason we can put as well. Sum of angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Okay, hopefully that was helpful.